Mothberg time once again. David Fine here, guys. We're chipping away. We're chipping away at Mothberg, y'all. And today, we're going to get through this little Tupperware and get started on some of this other mess in here. We've got so many bugs in there to mount, guys. Uh, today, guys, we are going to mount two, two moths. We have in this envelope the False Window Sphinx, Pseudothyrus Medorix, which is... Let's see, make sure that I'm telling you the right thing here. Pseudothyrus medorix, and we, it looks like we have an Elo Sphinx, which is a pretty common one. Uh, and guys, we're gonna mount both of these specimens from the Florida Keys here for you today. And we're gonna tell you a little bit about them. So let's get to this video and mount these moths. All right, y'all, we have in our envelope here, I'm just gonna dump them out, two moths that are common in the Florida Keys. This is Medorix pseudothyrus, the false window sphinx. And you can see why it gets its name. These little cells here on the forewing, uh, they look like windows, but they're actually silvered scales so that you can't see through them. So they call it a false window sphinx. blow some of those extra scales off so we can see our specimen more clearly. All right, yeah, so a lot of um, butterflies and moths have windows in their wings in that little cell right there. And this one looks like it does, but it's not a window at all. It actually has some silvery white scales. So uh, that's why I call it false window sphinx. It feeds on black mangrove, lives in South Florida because we're gonna put this guy right here in our rehydration chamber, as well as our Elo Sphinx. So now we've got a number of, um, a number of Florida Keys Sphingids in this relaxing <laughs> chamber right now, rehydration chamber. Uh, we've got a pink spot hawk moth. We've got Phryxus Caicus. Um, we've got Groat Sphinx, tiny little Sphinx moth. We've got Paragonia Lusca, the half blind Sphinx. We've got, this is Arinus, um, Arinus, um, oh gosh, Arinus um, Alopi, the papaya sphinx. We've got our false window and we've got Elo. So we've got a nice variety, plus a few other little things over here. But guys, we are going to um, mount our moths here in a few minutes. All right, folks, time for our next specimen. We are gonna mount the false window sphinx and Medorix pseudothyrus. The false window sphinx is cool guy, cool little moth that we get down here in the Florida Keys. And we are gonna do our little exacto knife magic and sever these tendons. Oh, I love that sound. Oh yeah, that sound is lovely. That's the sound of comfort and ease when you're trying to mount a moth. Yep. Bam. And it takes a little practice knowing where to cut. I've ruined plenty of specimens trying to figure it out. But boy, oh boy, that moth is a lot more pliable now and cooperative. So we're going to go ahead and mount our false window sphinx. We've got to put our number two Black enamel pin through the thorax. I always like to invert the wings on a sphinx and just press a little bit. Get those muscles nice and loose. All right, now he's ready to go right into the groove. Oh yeah, this is easy. Severing those tendons, man, it makes all the difference in the world when you're trying to mount a Sphinx moth, guys. I promise you, it makes a huge difference. You can try and do it without it, but boy, it is so much easier to just sever those tendons, be done with it, and let your specimen wings go where you want them to go, not where 
rigor mortis wants it to go. <laughs> All right, guys. False Window Sphinx is on the board, ready to go, ready for the covering of the wings. Uh, I've got its, let's see, I've got its uh, label here. These guys feed on black mangrove and they are a little bit more common, I think, than people realize. There's a lot of black mangrove all up and down the, the west coast of Florida. I believe they live all the way up through there. And that's it, guys. Uh, black mangrove feeder. Love this moth. Um, let's wait a week and take them off the board then. Alrighty. Okay. We are going to mount now our Elo Sphinx. Oh, Mr. Ello, Mr. Ello. Okay, it's uh, Sphinx surgery time. Exacto knife. Hear the crunch, crunch. That is the tendon snapping or being severed. Actually, that one didn't. There it is. There it is. Oh, that one didn't work. I actually just. Very interesting. If if you're if you you can actually push the tendon into the thorax, and the wing follows it. The wing goes wherever the tendon tells it to. That's why I like to sever that sucker because they are freaking pain in the butt. Um, yeah, I like to I like to sever this guy. He's not severed. Oh my gosh, the heck. I've never had this much of a hard time with a Sphinx moth. There it goes. He gone. Here we go. Now we're ready to go. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was a little bit more eventful than I anticipated. All right, here we go, guys. We are going to mount our um, Ello Sphinx male. We get our number two black enamel pin right through the thorax. We mounted a female here in another episode that we reared, and that was a nice specimen, but really tiny because it was stunted in its growth because we raised it and we switched the host plant. And I really tweaked this guy when I in my surgery. Interesting. I wonder how this is gonna mount. The males have these black streaks here on the forewing. Females females lack that black streaking, but we're gonna put this guy on a board. And dun, 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 dun. this guy is not cooperating. I've, I have not had a, this hard of a time with a moth in a while. <laughs> All right, we're in pretty good shape now, but when you don't sever those tendons, one of the hind wings, I actually damaged the, the thorax and when I tried to push in where the tendon was, all it does is push the tendon inside the thorax deeper and it stays connected to the wing. That's why I'm just having a hard time with this because it's, it's not properly severed. And if I don't leave these pins in the wings here, the if I take these pins out, even though I have it pinned down, these wings, the tendon is pulling that forewing down and it's gonna fall out of place and it's gonna look ugly. So I'm leaving those pins in the wings until I get the wings covered and pinned down nice and 
firmly, then I can take those pins out. Sometimes you just gotta improvise a little bit. Things don't go exactly like you hope they do, hope they would. And this is one of those where it's just kind of surprising. This guy's giving me a real hard time. So, you know, that's okay. I'm gonna give him a hard time back. Now we are talking. Now I can take this, these pins out of the wings, let those holes, hopefully the holes in the wings will close up when I take the pins out so they're not visible. So there, that's gonna be as a good specimen, guys. It's, it gave me a little bit of a hard time, but I think it's gonna work. Uh, did I create a label for our uh, false window sphinx? Madorix Pseudothyrus off the board. And he's been one of our favorite little bugs down in the Florida Keys because it's really the only place I know where to get it. But in the Florida Keys, they are quite widespread and common. Uh, they feed on black mangroves, which if you know anything about the, the plant life in the Florida Keys, black mangroves are everywhere. That's part of the uh, ecosystem down there are the mangroves, the mangrove ecosystem. So uh, great bug. You know, one of these days I gotta try and raise this thing and find some caterpillars, but uh, that'll be for another video. All right, taking our LO Sphinx off the board and let's see. You know, when the Ellos, when an, oh, I just busted an antenna. I'm gonna glue that back on. That stinks. You know, when an uh, Elo Sphinx is fresh, it's actually a very pretty bug. And uh, I'm gonna show you just how pretty they are. When I take this dude off the board, this is a male. Mm. Get off. And they've got those bright red hind wings, which is really cool. Let's take him off, put him with his friends. There it is, false window sphinx, folks. Uh, there's the false window. It looks like a window in its wing, but it's not. It's just scales. So other than that, it's a brown moth and it blends in nicely with its, its background. Uh, tree barks and whatnot. But we are going to get a label on him. We caught him in North Key Largo in the month of July this past year. And um, we're loving it. So we've got some great Sphinx mods building up from our trip to Key Largo in July 2022. If you like these, give me a thumbs up. I like them. I'm going to give myself a thumbs up. I'm going to like my own video. That's kind of taboo. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Guys, don't forget to subscribe and we'll get you in on some of the taxonomy action from the Florida Keys as we study all 600 plus species of moths that live there. Uh, guys, take care. Let's get out there and enjoy some bugs. Bye now.